situational awareness will win or lose a game. There's a reason why understanding the down and distance before each snap is so important in football. It helps to subconsciously define the micro mission of each player for each play throughout the 60 minute match. To have situational awareness, you need to be emotionally mature enough to understand the consequences of making the wrong decision in a crucial moment. Not all situational awareness failures cause a collapse. They just make you look really bad. Deshaun Jackson fell victim to his excitement on this surefire touchdown when he dropped the ball inches from the goal line. He got lucky though because everyone thought he'd scored and no one recovered the ball, so the Eagles got it back on the one yard line. Then there are repeat offenders like Quay Walker. Twice in his rookie season, he pushed a staff member of an opposing team and got ejected. The second time though was in the fourth quarter in the red zone in a win and in game against the Lions in week 18. In an instant, he let his emotions take over and he pushed a Lions trainer literally for no reason whatsoever. Quay Walker got ejected, Detroit went on to win the game, and the Packers got bounced from their playoff spot. Back in the day, Dwayne Rudd threw his helmet off in excitement thinking the Browns had won the game, only to realize that the play was still live and his celebration was a penalty. He put the Chiefs in field goal range with one more play of regulation, and of course, Kansas City capitalized. This is up there as one of the Brownsiest moments of all time, especially because it was completely self-inflicted. And speaking of throwing helmets, there was also this moment from last season. PJ Walker and DJ Moore did the unthinkable. Carolina tied up the game with this Hail Mary, and all they needed was a successful PAT to win the game. After the touchdown though, Moore ripped off his helmet while celebrating, drawing an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and turning the chip shot PAT into a 48 yard attempt. Eddie Pinheiro wound up missing the kick, the game went to overtime, and the Falcons won. In 2021, the Steelers were trying to mount a comeback and were driving down the field with no timeouts. They had to score a touchdown to stay alive, and every second counted. But what does Claypool do? After he converts on fourth and one, he decides to celebrate his short catch as the clock continues to burn away. When his teammates notice the delay, they run in to try and get the ball back so they can set it and spike it and stop the clock. But in the chaos, the ball gets knocked to the ground and 20 seconds get used up. Amazingly, the Steelers still almost scored as time was running out. And some people might watch that and say, hey, they had their chance to score a touchdown. But the truth is, they would have had at least one more attempt throwing the ball into the end zone if Claypool hadn't wasted that time. Most of these examples so far could be chalked up to momentary lapses in judgment sparked by excitement, anger, or frustration. But what we're about to witness is a masterclass on horrible situational awareness and is one of the biggest self-inflicted collapses of all time. The Bengals were on the hunt for their first playoff win since 1991. When AJ Green scored this touchdown with a minute and 50 seconds left in the game, the Bengals took a lead of 16 to 15. They had to hold the line for one more drive against Pittsburgh and they'd be moving on to the divisional round. When the Steelers got the ball back, they threw an interception to Vontez Burfecht in their own end and the game was almost surely sealed. Marvin Lewis would finally get his first playoff win and Cincinnati would break their long playoff win drought. That didn't happen though. Pittsburgh now had one more chance, but they'd have to drive from their own nine yard line in the rain. If we're locked in from a situational awareness perspective here, what do the Bengals need to keep in mind on this drive? Cincinnati can't let the Steelers ball carriers get out of bounds. They need to keep them from crossing their 40 yard line to keep them out of field goal range, and they cannot take any penalties. That means not retaliating to anything the Steelers might be doing to try and initiate a reaction. The Steelers start moving the ball little by little down the field, and we see the first spark of trouble. Keith Miller holds on to Pac-Man Jones a little extra and Pac-Man doesn't like it. He gives him a quick shot to the side of the helmet and a smack to the arm. The Steelers continued to work down the field, converted on fourth down, and got the ball to the 47 yard line with 22 seconds left. And this is where it all goes down. Antonio Brown runs a dig. The ball is thrown high and falls incomplete, but Vontez Perfect lowers his shoulder and rams AB's head. Perfect immediately tries to justify the hit to Marvin Lewis, as if it wasn't a late hit and a hit on a defenseless receiver to the head. In that scenario, the ball has already fallen incomplete before you make contact, so you can gain absolutely nothing by hitting Antonio Brown here. Still though, from this position, the game-winning field goal would have been from 49 yards in the wind and the rain, and the then-rookie Chris Boswell's career long was only 51 yards. But then, while Antonio Brown is getting walked off, 
former Steeler and current Steelers coach Joey Porter walks onto the field. I'm not sure if he was just trying to break up the scuffle, if it was a show of force, or if it was a mastermind move by Mike Tomlin to rile up the Bengals. But the Bengals players start jawing at him. One bumps into Porter, and then as the refs are trying to break up the scrum, Adam Jones tries to reach over three refs to get at Porter. And in the process of him reaching over, he slams into the back of a ref. Who knows what his end goal was, but this caused another 15 yard penalty. This shortened the game winning field goal attempt to 35 yards. Burfick's hit was asinine on its own, but at the very, very least, it was in the process of a play. When it comes to Pac-Man though, what was he thinking? What could be gained from him jumping over the refs to try and get at Joey Porter? Each of those penalties were the most yards the Steelers gained on any play throughout that entire drive, and they literally handed the Steelers this win. All of this is tied to situational awareness and emotional maturity. How can a team be that undisciplined? Poor situational awareness compounded with emotional immaturity can take away a touchdown, hand a team a victory, or end your season. Operate with situational awareness or else you'll become the pariah in the story of the people who you failed. Thank you so much. We will see you in the next one.